Fantastic. Well, I've got a message uh, on my heart this morning, and uh, my heart has been racing this morning, but that's good. And uh, it's interesting because a friend of mine said to me uh, just a week ago, he says, when you preach, you must get rid of these glasses that are kind of, because those of you who know me, I'm still relatively new to glasses, and I, I, I've, I've had them resting here. For, for a while, and uh, I, just because I, if, I, if I stand up and look at you through my glasses, everything goes a complete blur and makes me dizzy. So I thought, right, for the first time today, I was going to use my iPad on the lectern. So just before I was leaving this morning, I thought, right, I'll just print them. I'll just print off the notes just in case anything goes wrong with the iPad on the morning. So put it, change, did the font, blah, blah, blah. Then everything went. So I had no printed version of my notes and nothing on the iPad. Till literally 30 seconds before Phil came on stage, he sorted out my, and he managed to retrieve that which was lost. There's almost a sermon there. <laughs> so, um, but do you know what the funny thing was, was as I was driving down here this morning, I said, okay, God, that's fine. If it's all gone belly up, if there's not a note, if there's nothing on my iPad, that's fine. Do you know why? Because I want to talk about you. Because he, at, at the end of the day, he is what we're about. And he is enough of a message beyond anything else we can create. He is the message. And that's really what I wanted to communicate this morning. So I had a bit of a speed wobble on the way here. And, but I'm, I am thankful that I do have a few notes from which to go off this morning. And hopefully that God will really speak into your own situation this morning. You know, in Romans chapter 1, it says this, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Even in the natural world, what we see around us, God is saying, he is recorded in Scripture that everybody across the face of the globe has the opportunity to begin to see, it may not always look the same, but begin to see how enormous and incredible and beautiful God is. Why would that be? Why might that be? Do you think that there might be a plan that the creator of the whole universe would want some kind of relationship with us? So he has ordained from the beginning of time that everybody across the face of the globe, even, even here, think about this one, even if they've never been to the West, they might still know that there is a God out there who created what they see around them and who loves them. In Psalm 19 verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Now, I don't know if you enjoy looking up at the stars. Anybody like looking up at the stars of a night if you can see them? You know, there's, there are some incredible constellations out there. Are there not? And when it's a clear night and you can just sit or you walk into your car, whatever, just to, to, to look up there and to gaze and to be in awe and wonder, it is something to behold. There's one particular constellation called Pleiades, and we know it's, it's the one, you see, I was never very good at all this stuff as a kid and still aren't any better as an adult. But it's the one that looks a bit like a saucepan. Yeah? No, okay, you're all saying that. Right, anyway, just, just take my word for it. Anyway, it's called Pleiades. Whether it looks like a saucepan or not, that's irrelevant. It's called Pleiades. It's in the, it's in the Bible and referred to on many, a, many a, a, a time. And there's an interesting conversation that takes place in the book of Job between God and Job and God is just kindly, very sensitively reminding Job that he is God and that Job is not. And he says to Job, he says to Job, can you hold Pleiades in, in, in your hand? Now, if, if one was to ask us that question, anybody here be up for holding that constellation in the palm of our hand? No, I guess not. I didn't think so. And elsewhere in Scripture, it says this, that he holds, he holds the universe in the palm of his hand. Now, there's some significance to that. Here we are, 
in Freedom Church, in the island of Jersey, just one small dot. And God holds the universe in the palm of his hand. And do you know what? In the midst of all that, he can look down on you and say, you know you down there? Hey, all of you this morning, the 1st of October, sitting there in Freedom Center Church, I know you. Elsewhere in Scripture, it says in, in Psalm 147, he counts the stars, and listen to this, he counts the stars and assigns a name to each of them. So can you imagine, do you know what, our, our galaxy uh, or our solar system is part, of, is part of the Milky Way, which is our, effectively our galaxy. That's not the chocolate, which I love and are not on at the present. But I love, the, do you know, it, it can really make you feel insignificant. You look up and some nights you can see the Milky Way. That's just part of our solar system in our galaxy. Do you know there are billions and billions of stars in our galaxy alone? And scientists say that there are billions of other galaxies beyond the one that we're in. Does that give us a feeling of insignificance? Well, God says he calls them out, he numbers them, and he gives them each a name. And do you know what? If he gives each of them a name, and we as human beings are the crown, the pinnacle of his creation, I want you to know that he knows your name this morning, and he has never forgotten it. In fact, he was there when you were created in the depth of your mother's womb. He could see what you could become. And he wants us to be able to live life in the certainty that everything he has done, in the magnitude of who he is, as we live out our lives, that he is more than enough for us. Every sunset... Every sunrise, every sunset and every sunrise is an opportunity just to, to see and to say, do you know what? My God knows me. He made all of this and he wants a relationship with me. Every sunset, every sunrise, an opportunity. God saying, here I am. What does Romans 1.20 say? It's clearly seen for all to see. Every sunrise and every sunset, God is displaying, says, here I am. Here I am. Here's just one portion of my beauty and the magnitude of who I am. Does that, does that might and that power and that awesomeness give you a sense of security this morning? Because I want to encourage you this morning, when we go out the doors I want you to go out with a spring in your step that actually you are leaning on. You are friends with. You are held in the palm of the Almighty. And He is for you. That actually whatever this week throws at you, whatever you discover yourself, whatever problems you may find, that God is enough for you. Not the question, not to ask the question, is, is Jesus enough? Oh, have I done enough? Have I failed him this many times? What about if this happens? Oh, this is happening in my life. Is Jesus really enough? But to turn that on its head and to, and to walk with boldness, understanding the magnitude of the God, though we will never fully understand it, but understanding the magnitude of who he is, and we can change that whole question around and walk forward in the certainty that God is enough. Even when everything around us seems to be falling apart. From ocean depths to mountains high, green pastures to great canyons, they are all signposts of God's incredible goodness and provision to us. I want to read a few verses from Colossians chapter 1. This will be a familiar passage to you, but in context of what I want to say this morning. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. And I'm going to read from the message version today. Just because I love the way that it, um, that it lays it out, and I have the ability to be able to do so. Colossians 1. 
we look at, the, at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, what is short of everything? Everything, absolutely everything, just in case we weren't quite sure, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, that's everything, whether we can see it or not, not just to the naked eye, those things that we cannot see, which actually is most of the things that go on in our world around us, because believe it or not, we cannot see most things that happen. So things invisible, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. What a place to rest, that we're all here, find our purpose in him, because he was there in the very beginning, part of creation, before even creation, and he made us for his purpose. He made all of creation to worship him. And we find our greatest fulfillment when we are at peace with Jesus is enough for us. Everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. He was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection par parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, sorry, from beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. Isn't that an awesome way of putting it? Everything that is broken and dislocated, pieces of the universe, people and things, animals, atoms, and the rest of it, find restoration, find that place of security and fulfillment, all because of his death, his blood shed on the cross for each of us. You yourselves are, all, are a case study of what he has done, of what he does. At one time, you all had your backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. But now, by giving him, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together, whole and holy in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded and steady in that bond of trust, constantly tuned into the message, careful not to be distracted or diverted. There is no other message, just this one. Every creature under heaven gets the same message. And I, Paul, am a messenger of this message. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Jesus is enough. And I, I, I really want us to be encouraged this morning. That if we, are, if we are walking in a place of insecurity or feeling lack or nervous or feeling downtrodden, feeling depressed, feeling that we've left, we've, we've let God down. In fact, we've turned our backs on him. I want to encourage you this morning that it's not about, is Jesus enough? Because that's the kind of questions we would ask. But I want to encourage you this morning that you are able to stand right here, right now, in your place of brokenness, in your place of joy, in your place of strength, and say, Jesus is enough. And I will rest on that security. You see, I can remember, I mean, I don't know a lot about boats, but I know that a boat is, is anchored using an anchor. And it is the anchor's responsibility to hold that boat in a storm or just in the stillness of calm waters. 
I want us to understand that no matter how broken we may feel, no matter how, how much we may feel we've let God down, no matter how distant we may think we are from God, I want you to understand this morning that if you have committed your life to Him, here's the truth. He is holding on to you. Therefore, Jesus is enough because He can do what we cannot do because the reality is we always let go at some point. And you see, if we let go and he isn't holding on, then there's trouble. But the reality is, is that Jesus is holding on to you. Jesus is enough. It's not about whether we can do more for him. How does that make you feel right now? Is it a place of security? I want it to be. You know, I shared with you before some of my own journey for many, many years, probably, well, well in excess of 15 years, struggling as a Christian, striving, trying to pursue, feeling that I let God down all the time, feeling that I'm not emotionally connected to Him in the right way. But I'm coming to realization, finally, that it's not about me. Because God wants me to love Him Just for who he is, and to be secure in that, not love him for what he or for what I think he can do for me. And those things are two vastly different concepts. And I want us this morning to be in a place of strength, being able to go out from here, knowing that you can just God, it's all it's all I've got is to hang on to you. I know what you've done. Stop there. Stop right there. Because he's got you. Don't go into a woe is me and this is how bad I feel towards you. Keep resting. Have the faith just to lean on him. Do you know what faith really means? It is putting the full weight of our confidence in something. In this incident, it is simply putting the full weight of our confidence in Jesus. We've already read about the, the magnitude of what God has done. And I mean, we haven't even touched the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of what he did in laying the foundations of the world, how he flung stars into space. Wouldn't it have been awesome to have been there and watched it? Do you know what? I reckon one day we'll get a replay of that when we meet him face to face. But until that day, I'm just going to lean on him, put the full weight of my confidence in him. Because you see, if I'm confident in him to save me, Why would I be confident in myself or anything else? I've put my faith in him. It's like I want to know the security of what the cross brings me, but sometimes we're not not sufficiently secure in the cross itself. And it's in that cross, in what Christ has done for us, in Jesus himself, to walk out of this place today, that Jesus is enough. Do you know what I really... I re- the longer I have been a Christian, I think that this foundation stone needs to become more relevant, and more applied to my own life. And it is simply this. It is the age-old answer to the Sunday school question. Whenever the question was ans- asked, what was the answer? Jesus. And to walk, because what is, what is our walk? What does it mean to become a Christian? It is a walk of faith, not of sight. So that means that it seems to me that every step of every day, there are going to be many countless situations where I am actually not quite sure where I should put my foot. But he says, walk in faith. What does that mean? Put the full weight of my confidence in who? In myself? No, in Jesus, because he's enough. Not in my abilities to do X, Y, or Z. And I'm not taking away from our abilities to do anything. Because there are some pretty clever people in this room. But you know what? That cleverness, our, our earthly attributes count for nothing in the face of the Almighty. Because He is enough. He is enough. You can get up out of your chair. Walk out of that room. Out of this room. Walk to your car. Go get a cup of coffee. And that 
that phrase, that truth, let it ring in your mouth. Let it ring. Let it rattle around your head that Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. He's done it all for me already. You know, at the cross, it's like God says, enough is enough. It is finished. Who was he looking to? Who was he pointing to? His son on the cross, his sacrifice, it was finished and complete, achieved everything that was ever needed for us, is all there in the person of Jesus. That's why I think when it says about scriptures, you know, come to him as a child, not in a childish way, but actually having that filed, childlike trust. In, in one respect, I think this is why the church grows so quickly in places like Africa, where there is a, there is a level of faith and childlikeness. This is what God has done for me, therefore I will put my trust in him. But in our culture, we, well, we need to be rational, we need to think this one through a bit more carefully. Yeah, but the situation dictates that we should really be doing this. And, well, what about this? And the medical situation is as such. Is God any different? The God of the universe, the God who created everything around that what we see. Is he not more than able, even in the 21st century, even here in the island of Jersey? God is enough. It may be incredibly childlike. But isn't that, isn't that really a place of strength? Isn't there something beautiful? Those who, who have children or have seen it in children, there's that childlike trust, that absolute dependency on you. And you kind of think at times, where did that come from? It's like, but there is that absolute dependency on you as an adult. Isn't that, doesn't that mirror in some way the kind of dependency that the Lord wants of us? It is an incredible place of strength. Now, I'm not saying I'm fully through my ups and downs in terms of the, the wrestles I have. But I think there's a beginning of a discovery for me that, you know what? Jesus is more than enough for everything we are going through, for everything, for absolutely everything that can be, that can be thrown at us in, in this world. So putting the full weight of our confidence in. That is simply leaning on. Tim is putting the full, believe me or not, he is putting the full weight of his confidence in that chair right now. There, Right there is an act of faith. You may think that's a bit stupid, insignificant, but that's what it's mean. Simply around us, faith is not a, faith is not a religious concept because if people are exercising faith Every moment of the day, he's just happening to putting the full weight of his confidence in that chair. And when we talk about it in, in context of the Lord, to have faith is to put the full weight of our confidence, even if we know not what tomorrow will bring, to trust him that he is enough. That even if it, everything is seemingly going belly up, even if we lose our job you see, if our faith in Jesus is built upon what we believe he can give to us and suddenly we lose our job or we hear that we are terminally ill or that something else tragic is going on in our lives, if our faith in Jesus is built solely upon what we believe he can do for us, when something like that happens, our faith is rocked because we're dependent solely on what we believe he can give to us. Now, we continue to pray in all, to, in all of these areas, knowing that God is more than able. But should he choose not to, he is still enough. You remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There they are. You know, they were effectively, they were, they were facing what? They were facing being burnt alive. And the testimony came back, I know he can rescue me, us. I believe he can. But you know what? Even if he doesn't, 
we will continue to rest on him. And effectively, in that sense, we will not bow down and worship your gods. That, isn't that a place of strength? And do you know what? It, it's not dependent on you. It is not dependent on, on us, that place of strength, but on everything he has done for us. The psalmist, Psalm 73, says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Scripture again and again testifies to the truth that Jesus is more than enough. Jesus says to them in John's gospel, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus is enough. You know, there are a multitude of situations we could try and dissect this morning. What about the ifs and the buts? What about this situation? What about that person? What about if this happens or that happens? Do you know, the full weight of our confidence this morning is simply to say, do you know what, God? I've got no control over this whatsoever. And even if I have got control over it, I am simply going to choose to say that you are more than enough for this situation. You will lead me, guide me, direct me. You will strengthen me for the decisions that I have to make. That he is more than enough. So I want you to go out this morning in the encouragement and in the strength of that position. We're going to take communion in a couple of minutes. And it's an opportunity for us to celebrate what God has done for us. From the magnitude of what he's created. From the display, the heavenly hosts. And he considers us worthy to die on a cross to set us free. As we come, as we share in the bread and the wine, we come in a place of humility because it was all about him. We come recognizing that what he has done is enough for us. Now, maybe this morning that you're sitting here and, and that for you, you have never made that first step towards Jesus. You've never given your life over to him. I want to encourage you to do that this morning. And as we're going to step forward and take communion, the bread and the wine, this is an opportunity for you that in that process, as we take bread and as we, as we take wine together, that you're saying, Jesus, in the midst of everything that I'm going through, even if it's awesome that things are rosy, even if life for you at the moment is hell, I am deciding, I am deciding to put the full weight of my confidence in you. Take that bread, take that wine with confidence, not in what you have done, but in the full confidence of everything he has done. And it is more than enough for you. Every situation, in situations you're going to face tomorrow, situations you're going to face this afternoon, conversations, challenges, let this, I don't mind if you think, oh, that voice that's so piercing on stage. Let it rattle around your head. May my voice be a discomfort to you. But let the truth that Jesus is enough resound around your head and your heart. That in every situation you are facing, Jesus, you are enough. Can you imagine what it was like for Shadrach, Meshach, and as they're walking into that fire? Oh, yeah, this is fine. We've got it all sorted. I've got a direct line to 999. The boys will be here in a couple of minutes as soon as they... No. Jesus, we are putting the full weight of our confidence in you as we step towards the situation we know we have to go through. You see, walking in faith and growing in our love and experience of Jesus is not that he plucks everything away from us, but the certainty that he has promised always to be with us. 
And if that is his promise, who am I to doubt him that his promise will not come to fruition? He has promised never to leave us right to the very end of the age. No matter what ups and downs you may go through, understand this. Jesus is more than enough, more than equal to lead you through, to overcome, to circumnavigate, to pull you through. Because his name is higher than any other. His name transcends any other. He is higher. He is the top. He is the all-sufficient one. He is the creator. He is from beginning to end. He is the best. He is more than any other. He is absolutely tops. No other can top him. Understand this. Jesus is more than enough. Can we go forward in that? To be encouraged this afternoon. I'm going to ask the team to come and begin playing. As we're going to share in communion together. And this may be something for you that you've never done before. But it's simply to come, take the bread, take the wine, and understand that he has done it all. He has done it for you. So I'm going to pray as you make your way forward. There are four stations left and right here at the front, at the back, left and right. Let it be an opportunity to take, to eat, go off to one side. And to, as it were, reassign yourself to the truth and the foundation that Jesus is more than enough for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Jesus is more than enough. It's a place of incredible strength. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the beauty of who you are the magnitude, and we only see a glimpse of it. We look in a night sky, and we see the beauty of all you've created. And we look at an empty cross, and we see the sacrifice of a Savior. From beginning to end, it's been enough. Lord, as we come this morning, to share in that sacrifice as we take bread and as we take wine. I'm going to just ask people to come. As we come forward and as we partake, Lord, I pray that you reconfirm to us, you reassure us that yours is a finished work. Yours is more than enough. Encourage us to take and to put the full weight of our confidence in you all that you have done and Lord if there are people here this morning that for this maybe today is the first day in their lives that they say do you know what I want to put the full weight of my confidence in Jesus I don't know what it's going to look like for tomorrow or next week but I want to take the beginning of that step, know this God has you And he's promised never to leave you. He's promised to be with you every step of the way, regardless of what it looks like or what it feels like. Rest in the knowledge of who he is, not just what he can do for you.